Hi, I'm Tristan Stevens from the Customer Success Engineering team here at Red Panda. You've been hearing today from our engineers about how we built Red Panda, and today I'll be talking about some of the results of that work in terms of performance. Now, before we get into too much of the detail, a little bit about me. I've been working with streaming data since before Apache Kafka came about, and I've seen some fairly interesting messaging systems over the years. I was an early adopter of Kafka around about the 0.8 days. Um, so I've seen a few horror stories, uh, but a little bit more of that later on. Okay, the headline I'm gonna offer up is that Red Panda is 10 times faster running on half of the hardware. Now that's a pretty serious statement to make, but it's one that we've proven out and you're welcome to run these tests yourselves. I'm gonna start with a summary graph and and go into a bit more detail later on. But this has been kindly annotated by our founder, Alex, on his Twitter stream in the way that perhaps only you can do if you are a founder of a company like this uh, with, with a pen on your iPad. The graph tells us a lot, actually. On the left-hand side, we've got your average case performance, which is definitely one aspect of performance. But where Red Panda really comes into its own is the tail latency. And keeping the performance, the latency consistent, even 99.9% .9 and above of the time. So what do we mean by tail latency? And I just wanna double click on this for a moment. Tail latency refers to the latency and, and specifically we're talking about end-to-end -end latency. So the time taken between a client publishing a message and it being received back by the consumer. Latency at high percentiles. So when I talk about P99 latency, that's the performance level that happens all bar 1% of the time. P99.9 .9 is all bar 0.1% of the time, and so on. And it's easy to think that you won't care about the 1% case, but actually it comes up quite often, particularly if your tail latencies are high. If you've got a user-facing page that has a million hits per day, then that's 10,000 slow pages per day. But even if you've got a page that perhaps composes maybe 10 downstream services, then P99 suddenly impacts nine and a half percent of your requests and you know that's pretty much one in ten requests and latency really matters to consumers particularly when people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter if you have a page that doesn't respond in less than a second there's a decent chance that customer is going to be lost or certainly disillusioned okay so how do we go about testing all of this well our testing setup is based on the linux foundation's open messaging benchmark so Linux Foundation has got a project, it's called Open Messaging. They was, it was set up to produce a whole load of design patterns and templates for how to use messaging systems. Um, but actually probably the most successful part of that project so far is their suite of benchmarks that has a whole load of different configurations for Kafka and, and various other messaging systems. We've run over 200 hours of tests to get to these results uh, and, and testing various different configurations to make sure we're presenting both Red Panda and Kafka in the best light uh, and comparably as well, like for like. We ran three different workloads. The small, a 50 megabytes per second workload. We ran that on i3n large instances uh, and also some IS4 gen medium. And I'll, I'll go into a bit more on that in a moment. The medium workload, 500 megabytes per second. And we ran this on i3en 3x large and the large workload one gigabyte per second. So this is on i3en 6x larges. The clients were four M5N 8X large instances. And all of these workloads we ran with TLS and SASL enabled. Now our customers tell us that if they're, if they're putting their customer data through, uh, through Red Panda or Kafka, or if they're putting audit data, if they're putting transaction, you know, financial transaction data through this system, it's gonna run in production with security turned on. So, when we're running benchmarks, we need to run in a like-for-like -like manner. We need to run in the same way that our customers are going to be using us in production. So I'd always argue, be very wary of benchmarks that you see that don't have security features enabled because they can have a disproportionate impact. Okay, let's have a look at some of the results. Starting with the small workload. So this is 50 megabytes per second. Actually, this was perhaps the one that, that required the most amount of thought on our part. On the i3EN large instances, Red Panda was actually quite dr drastically underutilizing the hardware. You, you probably heard earlier on about Red Panda having a shared nothing model. And what we found was we were really struggling to get the benefits of that model at this workload size. It was only when we 
thought, well, actually, we need a smaller instance. And someone suggested, let's try the AWS Graviton instances. These are ARM based instances that you can get in AWS. So this has fewer cores and slightly less memory, but actually Red Panda ran, it was able to stress that box much better. It ran much faster on the smaller instance than it did on the larger Intel machine. Compare the red lines for Red Panda with the black line for Kafka. Now Kafka can't run uh, with TLS on the ARM instances. The way that Kafka handles TLS uh, falls foul of some problems in the Java virtual machine that mean you don't get hardware optimization on ARM. And so we actually couldn't complete this workload uh, on ARM for Kafka. So Kafka on Intel, you can see the performance actually starts to degrade around about P99, I think, um, where Red Panda is maintaining a particularly consistent latency profile, uh, even you know, well above P99.99. So Red Panda on this one, 12 times faster at 99.99, even on smaller, cheaper nodes. Okay, the medium workload. So this is 500 megabytes per second. On like-for-like -like hardware, so this is three nodes of Red Panda against three nodes of Kafka. Kafka actually couldn't complete this workload. Uh, the producers couldn't keep up when we had the consumers turned on. You could run just producers or you could run just consumers, but running them both, you actually couldn't sustain the throughput on that cluster. When we added in an extra node, Kafka was able to complete the workload, but you can see the latency really degrades right from the get-go. Uh, and we're looking at over 800 millisecond latency at the tail. With three times the hardware, um, so this is running uh, Kafka with nine nodes, we start to get to the point that Kafka is looking vaguely comparable, but actually we're still running four times hard, uh, faster at this point than, than Kafka on a third of the hardware. With three quarters of the hardware, 23 times faster. So um, much faster for, for Red Panda compared to Kafka on this workload. And, and let's for a second just look at the average latency as well. I know we've been talking a lot about tail latency and let's look at the average latency. And this graph is very similar for the small and uh, large workloads as well, but I thought I'd just throw it up here. Red Panda on the red line, very stable uh, at the average. And, and that's what you'd expect from average. With Kafka, you get a really spiky average line, which is kind of interesting. Um, the, on the smaller cluster, the four nodes, you get this kind of cyclic effect, which we believe is due to page cache eviction and the Java virtual machine. Even with the bigger cluster, you've still got a very spiky profile, right? It's bouncing around quite a lot. Um, and we don't have a lot of explanation as to, as to why you see this sort of behavior, but it's due to Red Panda's focus on performance that you get a very consistent uh, latency line, even on your average, as well as the tail latencies. So the large workload, this is one gigabyte a second. And I meant to mention earlier, we're talking about one gigabyte a second in and one gigabyte per second out. So it's actually two gigabyte per second workloads because we're running producers and consumers on this. Again, on like for like hardware, Kafka simply could not complete the workload. Okay, producers and consumers could not keep up. It just fell behind and the latencies go wrong and, uh, and it, 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 it all goes wrong. So we added in extra nodes. When we added in, when we doubled the size of the Kafka cluster, now we're running on six nodes. Uh, you can see again, this, this gray line kind of shoots off into the distance. We're looking at over six seconds of latency at, uh, at three or four nines, which is completely unacceptable, right? There's no way that you could have uh, a system that was having that sort of latency anywhere near any user that you might be having. Um, in order to get within a, you know, when, within an, a vague proximity of Red Panda, we had to again, go up to nine, nodes on Kafka. So again, running three times hardware. So Red Panda 70 times faster on half the hardware, seven times faster on a third of the hardware. And simply Kafka is not completing at this performance level. Right, that's the bottom line here. So performance is great, but can you save me money? Well, good news. Yes, we can definitely save you money. And the, the answer here is up to six times more cost effective and still 10 times faster. And let's look into how we got these numbers. So two factors come into play when we're looking at the total cost of ownership of Red Panda compared to Apache Kafka. The first is around infrastructure costs. Infrastructure costs are driven both by the node count, which we've just talked about how we had to add extra nodes uh, into Kafka in order to get the same sort of performance, 
but also auxiliary nodes, so nodes that are running Zookeeper, which we don't need, nodes that are running Cruise Control, nodes that are running a separate schema registry. All of that's packaged into one binary Red Panda, so we don't need those extra nodes. So just on infrastructure costs alone, we're saving three to four X uh, on Red Panda compared to Apache Kafka. Now we also hear from our customers that running Red Panda is actually much simpler than it is for running Apache Kafka. We see these these massive teams looking after these, these Apache Kafka clusters. Red Panda has features for auto-tuning, it has leadership and data rebalancing features, it has maintenance mode, it has rolling upgrades. We don't need to worry about looking after Zookeeper, which has a tendency just uh, to exit the building when it feels like it. So you end up with a much simpler system to manage. It also has much better data safety. So because of the way we have the RAF consensus groups, we don't have the possibility of, uh, of partitions falling in and out of the ISR set. We don't have the possibility of losing data or having unsafe leader election. So again, all of that combines to meaning that you need fewer people to look after your Red Panda cluster. And when you add that up, um, this is where certainly for the large workload, we're looking at up to six times more cost effective to run Red Panda than you would Apache Kafka. So there we have it, Red Panda 10 times faster, half of the hardware, six times more cost effective. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Tristan Stevens. Uh, feel free to get in contact with me. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love for you to try out Red Panda. Uh, feel free to get in touch via our Slack channels. Try us out. Thank you for joining. Have a good day. Thank you.